identify the carrying angle in the elbow and the carrying angle is determined by the axis of the arm and the axis of the forearm which is to be commented only when the elbows can be brought into full extension in situations where there is a fixed flexion deformity or a gun stock deformity it should not be commented so in an extended elbow with a zero degree of extension at the elbow the axis of the forearm and axis of the arm is drawn axis of the arm is drawn right from the lateral anterolateral tip of the of the acromion, acromion the anterolateral aspect of the acromion and the line joining the two epicondyles the medial and the lateral epicondyle the midpoint of the medial the line joining the medial and the lateral epicondyle is marked and the axis of the arm is drawn right from that anterolateral tip of the acromion and the midline of the midpoint of the line joining the medial and the lateral epicondyles axis of the forearm is drawn joining the radial steloid and ulnar steloid the midpoint of the radial the line joining the radial steloid and the ulnar steloid the midpoint is marked and the axis is drawn right from the midpoint and the cubital fossa of lateral and medial epicondyles of humerus down to the midpoint of the line joining the two steloid process and that is the angle which is known as a carrying angle which is roughly around 6 degrees in males while it is much more in females this carrying angle disappears when the elbow is flexed while elicit